It is a sign, perhaps, of how far we have come in this country that today's news of formal recognition between the governments of the United States and the Vatican did not create a furor. Once upon a time, it would have. Once upon a time, and not all that long ago, it did. But what was once a reflection of violent anti-Catholicism is not really a major political factor anymore. Still, there are those, not bigots, not even unfriendly toward the Catholic Church, who are concerned about blurring the line between church and state, concerned also about the Catholic Church playing a role in its relationship with the U.S. government, unique among all religious groups. It is that which we will discuss tonight. With, among others, Senor Daniel Patrick, Senator Daniel Patrick Moynihan of New York. Forgive me, Senator. Your views on this. Do you still think that it's going to be a major issue in Congress? First, Ted, uh, may I say that I was a co-sponsor of Senator Lugar's legislation, so I am an interested party. Uh, but second, a bit of history. The United States first began consular relations with the Vatican in 1797, when John Adams was president. In 1848, we raised those to formal ambassadorial level, ministerial, I think, level. Uh, Senator, forgive me, I hate not to avail myself of, of your ability as, a, as an historian, but if in this opening round you would just limit yourself to one brief thought, we will have an opportunity to come back to the history a little bit later. Do you think there's going to be trouble in Congress? No, we're just going back to where we were when the Republic began. All right. James Robison, an evangelist and host of the television program In the Word, joins us from Dallas. You oppose it? I think that the president has made a mistake, that he has set a potentially dangerous precedent. I believe that he's done it with the uh, best interest in his own mind of all the American people, but I think that he's perhaps approached this particular situation improperly. Do you think it ought to be reversed? I think that it should be considered. I think uh, it will be very heavily because I think that it has probably uh, cut against the uh, grain of much of evangelical Christianity. Roman Catholic Archbishop John May of St. Louis joins us now from St. Louis. Archbishop, those who oppose it, do you believe in your heart that they oppose it for the reasons that they now cite, which is essentially constitutional, separation, church and state? Well, I would certainly have to uh, presume that they do for those reasons. I would take their word for it, certainly. However, I would think that that's a constitutional question and it should be settled by constitutional law and, if necessary, even in court. Uh, that's a, a further question, I think. Henry Sigmund is executive director of the American Jewish Congress. He joins us from New York. Why do you oppose it, if indeed you do? Yes, indeed we do. Uh, but the issue is not the Catholic Church, nor is it the Vatican. The issue is the Constitution of the United States which, as indicated, uh, prohibits the establishment of religion. And we oppose it because we believe that the establishment of formal diplomatic relations is, in fact, an establishment of religion. Dr. Malachi Martin, also in our New York studio, is a former professor of theology at the Vatican's Institute for Bible Studies in Rome. Anyone within the Catholic Church who would oppose this, Dr. Martin? Yes, I'm sure there are people who would oppose it but I think the majority of American bishops will support it. Why would anyone oppose it? Uh, they would look on it as a gesture of imperialism, which they accuse the Vatican of, if I can end a sentence on a preposition. Why not? And from our affiliate WBRC in Birmingham, Alabama, Bishop Philip Cousin, President of the National Council of Churches. Bishop, in this era of ecumenism, why opposition to a move such as this? The opposition uh, we voice is threefold. Number one, we think it is questionable in practice. Uh, number two, we think that it has principle, which we question. And number three, it has far-reaching consequences, which can be detrimental to the national unity of our people in a time when we need unity. To establish diplomatic relationships with the Vatican now, in essence, is establishing diplomatic relationships with the Holy See, for the Pope cannot be divorced from the Vatican, and to establish diplomatic relations with the Pope is to establish diplomatic relations with one church over against another church. And this raises issues of separation of church and state, which can be of far-reaching consequence.